and we are welcoming you to Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, the broadcast. And we are grateful that you are joining us from wherever you may be joining us. You know, we have switched for those who are with us. Know now that you have gotten the message that we are no longer going to be on Willie.Jolly Facebook page, nor we're going to be on the real Willie Jolly Instagram. We're going to focus everything to a jolly marriage. So this is the first one. So we'll give people a few more shakes to realize, oh, they're not over there. Oh, that's right. They told us it's going to be a jolly marriage, a jolly marriage. We've been talking about how money is impacted. We told you to get past the Kelly Wright and Kelly uh, Hawkins and his beautiful bride, Penny, when we were in the car with them and they were taking us to the funeral service, uh, they talked about how they have post pre-marriage. Um, okay, remember you jumping on Facebook, great. Okay, that's on uh, a jolly marriage. Okay. Jolly marriage. So uh, they talked about how they have pre-marriage counseling and want their marriage to have counseling and the same con constant troubles, challenges come up. Communication, sex, and money. Communication, sex, and money, which we have said in the book. And it's all about communication. Well, but we've said in the book, those are the big three things. In the book, I want to tell you something I read that I thought was profound. That in the chapter on count the costs, money matters. We had to have some time in our relationship where we had to work through our money issues. Not issue, not problems, issue. Let me read this. Let me read this little piece that D wrote that we got from D. It was a big, it was, it was a bright spring day when Willie came to me with a big smile. I'm ready for the tax man, he proclaimed. He placed a wrinkled brown grocery bag on the corner of my desk. I said, D said, I said. What's this for? Well, these are my receipts, bank statements for the year, all ready for the tax man, for the tax preparer. <laughs> she said, I was speechless. Why don't you read it? I keep telling you, read it. Just read it. Go ahead. Read it, read it. I was speechless. This was our first personal tax return preparation as a couple. Since I had worked the administrative side of mom and dad's businesses, including their church, I understood financial details. That made it easy for us to agree that I should be responsible for getting the taxes done. At the time, we were getting ready to visit a local tax preparer and I assumed it would be a breeze. But assumptions are never good, especially when it comes to couples and anything related to money. I made the mistake assuming that Willie would have his summary list of personal expenses. This included medical, dental, donations to our church, any out-of-pocket business expenditures that we had overlooked. Naturally, I thought that this information would look like mine. Listen on a sheet of paper with the supportive information attached. Instead, there sat this wrinkled brown bag, grocery bag, on the corner of my desk filled with receipts with little notes on them. He was so proud, too. That was all Willie's tax filing system. He seemed so proud of himself. Talk about a hot mess. Fortunately, I realized this was not the time for me to communicate and hurt his feelings. So, see, we always have to be sensitive to our, our spouse's um, feelings as well as their, what's the right word? Um, ego. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Organization was second nature for me and it was not for him. I married a singer who was often paid in cash and the brown bag made me realize that was his accounting system because he did have all of his receipts. After I recovered from the shock of it all, I realized we need to have a frank and yet friendly discussion about financial procedures. I sought to give him a different perspective. So really, I had to kind of work him through the process and, and, and get him on board with how to organize. And that has been a lifelong. You're, you're, you're so much better than you are. I am more better. I'm more, more better. I'm, I'm, more, so much I'm better. more better. I'm more and better. And I organize. I say I organize around his chaos, but he's much better. And while I, I will ask for certain things with his desk, it looks like it's chaos, but he can put his hand on the information that I need. But certain other things I've discovered that certain pieces of information related to the business or related to files that I'm going to need for tax uh, time or 
forms and the like, or even folders that are color coded, I don't leave them on his desk. <laughs> because I know that it would disappear under a pile of stuff. So important pieces of information, I will give it to him. It's color coded, and then I will retrieve it. And he, he's aware of that. I know what's going on. So Terrence, Ethan Gray, thank you. You found us, found it. Thank you, buddy. And more and more jumping on. It's going to happen. It's going to take a little while for people to get used to the new mm -hmm. spot. But this is where we're going to build it out. Okay. A Jolly Marriage. A jolly so marriage. our specific topic this evening is, is your, this, this one is really good. Is your spouse your retirement plan? Ooh, ooh, okay. Ooh. Is your spouse your retirement plan? Ouch. And we have some history and, of and this. Then, we're going to look at that from, from a couple of different perspectives and to give you some suggestions. So we're going to quickly go back to what is your money personality type? Mm -hmm. Because I think that opens up a dialogue for couples because we really didn't, we really didn't know what personality types we were. Right, right. But now what is our money personality type? We know you are a. I am a saver. I tend to save. Which is very different than investing. Yeah. I had to learn that's, that's not the same thing. They're not the same thing. A spender. What's it really a, sp uh, a spender? You, you, you're not really budging. You just kind of spend haphazardly just whatever you want without thinking about, will I have enough money? Right. Or do I have a budget? Right. Then there is the debtor or the gambler. Oh, you know what? I just figured out Terrence F. from Gray is se senior is S.R. Terrence. I just got it. Hey, what? all this time, I, 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 I didn't know that that was the same person. This is Terrence, is our friend who's been with us from the get go. And but over here on Instagram, it's SR Terrence. Uh -huh. Now I know it's Terrence and from Gray Senior. Oh, I get it. I get it now. I, the, the, <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it, Terrence. And then my personality, the indifferent indifferent to money, which was me, which meant I, I really had no clue about money because it was just always there. Right. Okay. Right. So we have the basic money personality. Sometimes if you read other books or go to other uh, websites or blogs, they might have slightly different names, but it comes down to, are you just spend haphazardly until all the money is gone for the month? Mm, some, people, you a, some people spend and hope there's going to be more month, more month than there's money. And well, then just spend it and wait for the next paycheck to come. That's right. Then you have the saver. Yes, which me. you were. Mm -hmm. Then you have the investor, which means you are focused on the stocks, the bonds, and things that will make more money for you. It's like you send your dollars out to work, and they come back bringing more dollars. Correct. And that's how you build wealth. Right. One major way to build wealth. And a debtor or a gambler, I mean... Gamblers Anonymous, there are issues there. And then the indifferent ones, like, duh, really have no clue, but I got it together. Okay, and the homework was discuss your money personality with your spouse. Mm. I think that was, a, that was a great way to start. Just, That's just, a, what do you a, think very about money? Important, very because what important you think way. about money really determines the kind of relationship that you're going to have, or it, it determines the conflict. Right. And if you don't understand how they view money, and they don't understand how you, you see money, right, right. you're going to have constant So what we say in the book, what we say in the book, go back to the book, and hopefully everybody has a, has a copy of the book. It talks about discuss your money mindset. Issues you should prepare your list of financial liabilities and assets so you know where you are individually, and then get on the same page by talking about Money, debt, savings, investing, retirement, and financial freedom. Okay, so before we even get to that, so I've improved on that. This needs to be another version. Right. Because how can you discuss your, your assets and your liabilities? Some people might, might not even know what assets and liabilities are unless you first just talk about this. This is how I experience money. This is what I think about money. Or my, 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 you what I talk. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, you say it. Well, I, some people have have a completely different perspectives of money and family. And, and Dee and I have recently been talking about what did your family talk about money when you were growing up? What did your parents or your guardians, 
how do they talk to you about money? Many of them said things like money doesn't grow on trees or, um, you know, we, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have a lot of money, we, but we got a lot of love. You know, anybody who got friends is wealthy. You don't need money. Well, that kind of thing is good. But that, that paints a picture about money that is sometimes unrealistic. Or and it can be skewed and you don't really have a sense of, okay, now you're out on your own. How much money do I need? Because I want to live in this kind of apartment over here. Do I need to have money at the end of the month? Right. And then and how am I preparing for the future? If you've never really had those kind of conversations, I said, I did not have those kind of conversations, even though I came out of a household that was very well established financially. Correct. But I didn't have a clue. Terrence said, my was family, always there. my family, nothing. He said there was no talk about it. I, and a lot of folks didn't. My mother didn't talk about money per se. She talked about education. She was big on education. And the only thing she said about money was save your money. Now, my grandmother was more of the entrepreneur. Now, my mother was a great entrepreneur because she, when my dad died, she really did step up and find new revenue streams to make sure that she had enough money for taking care of us. But even then, she didn't talk about investing. She, We didn't have money conversations except work hard, get a good education, and then save your money. So I started with a paper route. I started with, well, I actually started with walking people's dogs and going on errands. That was my way of making money. And I always chunked some away, chunked it away. And but what I, if you had been investing? Isn't that something? Oh, if I had known no about clue. investing, if I had known about investing, we'd be living on the Riviera. Uh, we'd be living on the Riviera. I was making money from a little kid. I mean, 10, 11, 11 12 years old, I was making money. <clears throat> but I was saving it, but I wasn't investing. I had a had a mama got started opening a bank account for me at Industrial Bank, opening a bank account, passbook savings account. I remember that. All right, had a passbook, mm -hmm. and I would go up there so nice and put my little money in, and they. And we thought up. we were doing something saving money. Now, well, was now doing, we it was better have, than se spending. We do have to have money saved. We do. I never really heard about an emergency fund. No, that right. you would. Now they say, you know, you have three, used to say three to six months worth of emergency money. And I didn't get that until much later. We we were married. Yeah, right. right. And I know I had to score away because my mindset changed because now I'm married to somebody who's being paid in cash and sings for a supper. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tara. And then I brought that bag of receipts oh. to her and said, okay. here's, my, okay, here's so my deal. We did. Look, we didn't know. We didn't know. So but you, you got some good, become educated. You okay? got some good data for them. Yeah. So so when we say now, so the topic today is why do we say is your spouse your retirement plan? Ooh. Okay. Now I'll have to add this. When I was at Howard University, mm -hmm. they said you come to Howard University as a female, you come to get you a doctor or a lawyer. That was the goal. That was part of the retirement plan. <laughs> you come to Howard University and you get yourself a doctor or a lawyer. That, that's what you get. That was, I, I, I didn't figure that out either. But I, I would hear that. I was like, oh, really? That was a retirement plan. Wow. You set for life. But then, then they think about what if you get divorced and what if that person dies? I.e., one of her friends who lived with us for a while, who went to Howard University. And got her a doctor. She helped, did. And helped to put him through medical school. Yeah, she dropped out. Well, dropped out, got married, pregnant, dropped out of school, and put him through medical school. And when he was all done with medical school, he was done with her. He, he divorced her. Divorced her, married a doctor, and moved to the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. She had nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. She had to come live with us. She mm -hmm. called us one day. She had nowhere to go. Nothing. That's finally. I mean, she did administrative work here and there, and she was going to be a nanny. nanny. Mm -hmm. And she and the lady fell out. And she was on the street. And she did. So, but here are the lessons that you can't be thinking like that for the long term. I'm going to make my spouse my no. retirement plan. Your spouse and what was my man say when we interviewed? He did his interview on, our, on his show. Uh, is your, are you inheritable? Are you... Um, you okay? I, I, you know, it, 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 are, are you are you trust fund worthy? Yeah, are you trust fund worthy? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll get back. 
you should write that one down. Are you trust fund worthy? That, yeah. That's an important thing. So the topic is, is your spouse your retirement plan? And the reason that I worded like that, because I began to think of what has happened to us in the last, let's say, 10 or 15 days. For example, one of our dear friends, male, had a stroke. 60, 60 years old, massive stroke. Massive stroke. Mm -hmm. Then Willie's cousin's husband, what, less than five days ago, died in his sleep. Yep. And he was in his six, his 60s, but they were there like yep. in their late 50s, 60s. Okay. And then we have a wonderful intern who discovered her dad died of COVID mm. at the beginning of this in, in, in March of right. April of 20. And did not have insurance. No insurance. Woo, woo, woo. And then a friend of mine, school teacher, mad at her daughter, and she retired, mad at her daughter, changed her beneficiary mm. to a cousin. In another state. In another state. And she had been ill. Ill. She passed away. And the daughter had to struggle because she had to pay for all the funeral arrangements plus the closing of her. She had a condo and all this kind of stuff. And the cousin who inherited the life insurance money would not help her. Is that right. ridiculous? Unbelievable. Would, would not help her. So having said that, is your your spouse your retirement plan the answer should be no. no what do you need to look at let's get some background so this is kind of where i just got obsessed with this some 80 percent of married women outlive their husbands wow 80 percent. 80 percent of married women outlive their husbands and that's according to the census bureau for 2020 so what do we do? You here? won't. I won't outlive you, cause no, you go down. But I only go by one day. <laughs> uh, let me read this little piece of the book. Discuss your mutual financial goals, short term, long term, for your marriage, household, and family. Then set about building your plan for one year, five years, ten years, twenty years to reach them. Take the example of a ship's captain preparing for a trip at sea. Chart your course to your ideal destination now and be prepared to reconfigure later. A ship without an initial course of destination will be lost at sea. Now, you know, actually, that's what we're doing now, but we're actually picking it apart. Right. We're picking it apart and saying, first of all, you can't have a meaningful conversation about money and planning and the like until you both know how you think about money. That's correct. Because it's going to be a clash. Okay, so... We know that 80% of married women are going to outlive, outlive their husbands. And they say, why? So what is it, the reason that our husbands are dying early? Okay. Well, part of it is, is stress, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. We can say that our friend and, our, and your cousin's husband, they fell into some of those categories. Okay. That's, That's terrible. And it, and it impacts... How you, you, this whole money thing is impacting relationships. People mad and, and, at each and other. Then, and then you feel insecure. Won't talk you, to each other. You with somebody who's an alcoholic. Woo. Huh? Somebody and was. You, and, and, and you're feeling insecure about was, the, it, money, the money. About, about the money. About the ability to work. Yep. That affects your sex life, don't you think? Okay, now. That mess up your sex life. And I don't want my sex life. To, that's why I talk to her about the money. In fact, I give her the check. Here you go, baby. Here you go. But then you expect me to know everything. That, well, I expect you. Back. I'm the, oh, I'm the tree shaker. And you're the, it is. I'm the tree shaker. You're the money. I'm the tree shaker. You're the jelly maker. And I do expect you to know where the jelly is. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Now, of the majority of the women who are now widows say in the research that they wish they had taken a more active role in the finances. Mm. Now, I take that a little further and say you both, whomever it is, should discuss who it. is the primary, because you it's, it's never really 50-50. Right. Right? Never. Whoever is the primary has to communicate and has to say, okay, we got to go over this. We right. got to go over these finances. Okay, look at our, our 401k. This is what's going on. What are the passwords? All of that just because of peace of mind. Because it's not just in this case, we have the friend, the cousin, and like the guy. But what if you are alive and can't communicate? 
Mm. Well, the one who had a stroke was almost there. Uh, yes. Very good talking. So right, right. So also the 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 Bureau of Statistics says that in 2020, a woman still earns less than a man. So we're earning 82 cents for every dollar the man the man earns. Okay. Plus they note that we've got 11.5 years on average out of the workforce for having children. And we're also the caregivers for, for the elder members of the family, much more so than the male. So what does that mean? So that means that, okay, you're making less money. Mm -hmm. You're in the labor force a shorter period of time, right? And you live longer. So you got to have more money. A friend of mine said something yesterday. And that you're always generally you're poor. And when they get divorced, the research also says that when couples divorce, the male always ends up with more money. Then the woman may end up with the house. Right. 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 But the house has all these expenses that are eating away at it from the taxes. Well, to we, the don't, we, we, we don't want nobody divorced. So that's, all. <laughs> so that's why we got this show. But we're trying to keep people from divorcing in the first place. We're trying to keep you all together. Our goal when we wrote the book, and hopefully everybody got a copy of the book. If you don't have a copy of the book, go to Jolly Marriage. JollyMarriage.com. Get the marriage pack, the whole package, which is two books, two workbooks, an audio book, and a CD seminar. We want you to get them all, and that will save you a lot of time and energy and headache and save you from having to go to the divorce lawyer and see him and pay him 10 grand or 20 grand. I have one friend who spent $250,000 in his divorce. Woo! $250,000. Okay, okay, so, uh, Be Be Beverly Wing Ming Jews joined us. Hey, Beverly. Hey. Uh, and you got to let folks know we have shift shifted because many people are still trying to figure out where we are. We had a jolly marriage uh, on all social media. A jolly marriage. All right. So this is going to have to be part one. The key question, and this is all set up for the key question. Where is your money and who gets the benefits when you're gone? Well, that's a difficult. I, I don't want to focus as much on that as where is your money and how are you talking about it while you're here? Okay. All so right. you must have a money conversation with your spouse. You that must. That's how you want to have a it. conversation. You must have a money conversation with your spouse. If you can't have a money conversation with your spouse about any and everything, it is called a lack of trust. And that's a whole nother Well, issue. is it a lack of trust or a lack of communication? So you're saying it's a lack of trust. Well, I say it's a lack of communication because... So why can't you communicate? Why can't you talk? To your spouse about because some spouses say plan, because your, some spouses say I got this I got this I got it you don't have to worry about why it. I won't. Why do they have it? They can't tell you about it because they feel comfortable and confident. I some men think I'm the man of the house. I'm the provider. Period. That's how they were raised. You don't need to worry about it. I got it. It don't, doesn't make sense. Well, if that's part of your culture, it does. So then you need to talk about it. But if you won't talk about it, I'm like, you're not talking about that because you don't really trust. And that's yourself. not true. We yeah, disagree. See, so, so we're disagreeing. We right disagree here. on that because I don't think it has to do with trust. You have cultural things. Like some people, they say, my wife is not supposed to work. They tell your wife when she could be college educated. No. Where I grew up in my household, my dad said, my, my wife and my dad have to work. Period. And it's not got nothing to do with trust. Did they know where the money was? No. <laughs> they didn't know where the money was because all the needs were met. The husband was the provider. That was his job. I don't understand that. That that that's how is that responsible when it's your very partner responsible. doesn't it, know where the money is? Well, that's part of the culture, but we're saying that is not a good thing because something happened to one of the people. We see him every day where the wife ends up. We've had wives go, I don't know where the money is. He died suddenly. I don't know the passwords. I don't know the accounts. I don't know nothing. I don't see that as being responsible. I'm not saying it's responsible. I did not say it was responsible. I said it's cultural and it has nothing to do with trust. You are putting a, uh, you, they don't trust them. That's, that's not always true. I'm not agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Two, you intelligent people. Okay, I get that. That's where I was culturally, but that's what we talk about. Okay, so that's how that's how they did it there. That's how you did it 
there, then we, we're more enlightened. Well, we're enlightened because I was. We are enlightened. That's right. Beverly says, I'm right. You're right. Well, it's part of the culture. But what we're trying to do is help people shift cultures so that they can talk about money. Because in that culture, also, many times we find. And then you upside down. We find women, though, who are not valued at the same level because they haven't been involved in the finances. And my wife is involved in every intricate piece of the money, every penny. She knows where we're investing it, where we're saving it. She knows where it's doubling, where it's going to this to that. And she takes care of those issues and I trust her. Her, I'm a tree shaker, she's a jelly maker, and our time is up. Oh, our time is it up. It is not easy. So we gotta, we're gonna get back. We'll, we'll get back. Look, everybody go to jollymarriage.com, get the book. Make love, make money, make it last. Get the package. Two books, two workbooks, audio book, and a CD seminar. Get it now. It will inspire your marriage. Read the book together. Read the book. You're at the end of each chapter, take notes. Each person had their personal copy. Take notes and say, oh, here's what I learned. Here's what jumped out at me. And discuss it as a couple. So it will grow. Do oh, it. It's going to grow your marriage and it's going to help fix your marriage. Okay, what did you say? So we're going to discuss a simple checklist next week. That we, we didn't get to. You know, right. what's your simple house? Uh, you, you getting ready to go down to that rabbit hole. You get she 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 has tried slick. Look, we know she know we got 30 minutes, so when she can't get it all in in 30 minutes, she starts saying, Oh, we're gonna talk about next week, like, and then she'll start going down to check checklist. We're not we don't have time now. Our time is up. We'll see you next week. Tell everybody that didn't join us this week because they didn't know where to find us that we are we're at, gonna at, work on that. We, we are at, we're gonna put the word out. Okay. A jolly marriage. A Jolly Marriage, all social media. A Jolly Marriage. Thank you, Thank Terrence. You for joining e from us. Gray. Thank you, Beverly Ming. Thank you, Thank you Beverly. Blondie. Thank y'all all. Tell everybody you know who watches regularly. Here's where we are now. A Jolly Marriage. God bless y'all. Heaven smile upon you. Jolly See you out. later. Jolly out. Bye bye.